Why would a loving God allow so much suffering? I do not know why God allowed evil and suffering. For thousands of years, philosophers and theologians have struggled with that question. They've never come up with an ultimate answer. And I am not going to be able to ultimately answer you. But as a follower of Christ, I have to think. First point, Genesis chapter 1 records that when God created this, God saw that it was good. When God created that, God saw that it was good. So God did not create evil, suffering, and death. But in Genesis chapter 3, we read how human beings rebel against God. And when we told God to step off, to get lost, to remove his act elsewhere, he partially honored our request, and when God stepped back, chaos, destruction, and death entered. So you and I were not born into a fair world. You and I are born into an unfair world. Not because God created it that way, but because the all-powerful God chose to partially limit his power by creating me free. If I hold back and slap this man and turn to you and say, God made me do it, I'm a con artist. I'm a liar. God gave me a hand for the purpose of loving and respecting this man. But because I have a free will, I can roll this hand into a fist and send it crashing into his handsome face. If I have the audacity to say God made me do it, I'm a liar. I have a free will. And you and I live in a world where there's a tremendous amount of suffering, evil, and death that's a direct result of human irresponsibility. Remember, when we human beings rebel against God, God steps back and evil, chaos, suffering, and death enter the experience of humankind. Now, why? Why did God choose to create us with free will? Ultimately, I do not know. Well, come on, Cliff. It would be better if we didn't have free will. Then we wouldn't have evil and all this suffering and death. Yeah, we also wouldn't have love. Because in order to be real. Love has to be free. If it ain't free, it ain't love. If he's been dating somebody for the past two months and she has said to him, I love you. And tonight his dad calls him up and says, son, I've been paying her 1000 bucks a month to date you. He'd be royally bummed out. Why? Because you cannot manipulate or force love. And God created us to live in a love relationship with himself. You cannot force love. Oh, but God's all powerful. He can do anything he wants. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. God cannot make square circles. God cannot make two plus two equal five. And God cannot make himself exist and not exist at the same time in the same way. Impossible. When the Bible says that God is all-powerful, it means he's all-powerful over his creation. But obviously what he's chosen to do is he's chosen to limit his power and give us free will. And that's why you love. And that's why you enjoy so much when other people love you. Because you know they don't have to love you. You know that they freely choose to love you. Now, Jesus Christ commands us to feed the hungry, to alleviate suffering. And I have younger brothers and sisters, some of whom are medical doctors, some of whom are lawyers, some of whom are teachers. And because of their faith in Christ, they put it on the line. And they serve in Nepal. In India, my brother who's a medical doctor, motivated by his faith in Christ, they serve and they love people to make a practical difference. And so as a follower of Christ, I have no option but to give to those who are hurting. I have no option but to care for the needy. Because the God who created me gave me talents like a rational mind. And he holds me responsible to use those talents in order to serve others. And I don't serve others because of fear of a big stick. Instead, I serve others because I understand the truth that every single human being on the face of the planet it has dignity and value because they're not accidents. They're human beings created in the image of God. Ultimately, because God is a suffering God, he has provided the solution for suffering and death. Forgiveness and eternal life in heaven where there will be no more HIV positive, no more heart failure, no more cancer, but eternal life in the presence of God. Now, my atheist friend, let's go to the hospital. Come on, my atheist friend. Let's go to the room where the baby lies whose body is being shredded by terminal cancer. Come, my atheist friend. What is your solution? Tough luck, kid. Your mama didn't read her horoscope. It's fate, destiny, chance. That is the decision spare of atheism. I, as a follower of Christ, walk the other side of the bed, and along with my atheist friend, I will hold the child's other hand. But in Jesus Christ, I have a suffering God who died on a cross, rose from the dead to give the ultimate solution for suffering, eternal life in heaven.